everyone. This is Rick Bantelman. Um, just going to wait a few seconds. We've got a lot of the folks joining. I actually have quite a few um, people joining uh, for this meeting. Very excited about that. So give me just a second and then uh, we'll start. Just a sound check, Dan. Uh, Scott, you able to hear me? We can hear you just fine. Yep. Great. Thank you. Seems to be working great. Thank you. Just give it a couple more minutes and uh, let folks join. So many people jump from meeting to meeting that we'll give them a, a chance to catch it from the beginning. Okay, looks like we've got a fair amount uh, that have joined, and um, so we'll, we'll get moving here. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for joining. Um, we're going to have a smattering, I'm sure, of uh, current customers and also people that are for the first time attending uh, uh, this webinar or this or a series of webinars that we have that uh, are fairly new. So what I'd like to do is uh, only a few slides of an introduction, which will be old news for some of you, but we'll get into the 5.4 updates and version 6 uh, preview uh, right after that. So let's let's just jump right in. About my work drive, launched in 2014. Here's our customers, enterprises, government, high ed education, and nonprofit. Uh, as you can imagine, with COVID, uh, education has become huge. We work with so many universities that all of a sudden are providing remote learning. And that really goes across the board with all of our customers. So uh, we're, we're very busy, but in spite of all that, uh, got a lot of development done, um, which is driving this uh, presentation. So here we are, that's me on the left fumbling around in this PowerPoint and then uh, that I'm the sales guy. So I, I get a pass on that, right? Dan Gordon is on, uh, he'll be taking over uh, to show you the version six uh, preview. And Scott will, uh, from our director of engineering, will talk about the five, four updates and what's in all of that. Uh, kind of exciting on speed improvements, things like that. Okay, for today, what are we gonna talk about? Why my work drive? Um, you'll, you'll certainly uh, get a feel for that. And, and again, 542 updates, the product demo, uh, any roadmap things that uh, Dan can share, he'll do that in Q&A. Q what, what are we? If we were in an elevator and I had 30 seconds I, and say, hey, what do you do? I would say we provide secure access to your network shares remotely without the use of VPN, RDP, uh, anything uh, other than a web browser. And if you choose to have a map drive or a mobile uh, uh, experience, uh, we have clients for those. So literally, you just need a URL, no VPN, things like that. And we have really, really seamless integration to Office Online. Um, and, and I'm sure those that are current customers know that. And uh, for those that aren't current customers, we actually have webinars, uh, anytime webinars that you can go and at your leisure look and you'll get a, a deep dive on uh, how all this functionality works. My work drive security features, Duo, ADFS, SAML, two-factor authentication. No data left behind. Because we provide access to the network shares where they live based on um, Active Directory and underlying NTFS permissions, we don't have to sync our uh, files out and have them orphaned anywhere. Um, you're always working on that copy. So that, that's the, why we coined the term, no, no data left behind. Data leak prevention, that's something very uh, unique that we have where you can, maybe when you're in the office, you have total read, write, download capabilities, but you can apply to any share um, uh, group or user data leak prevention where they can look at the files when they access through my work drive, through our viewer, but they'll be watermarked, date and time stamped uh, for logging purpose for those very sensitive files. Compliance government, HIPAA, FIPS, GDPR, GSA, FedRAMP. And that's that's because of the way we do it. We are certified or compliant with each of those. And um, again, we have data leak prevention with uh, uh, encrypted view. 
uh, Office 365. Our interface with Office 365 is, is very, very uh, seamless. Uh, it, it's funny when we first get asked uh, and do a demo, people say, do you provide training? And then after we do the demo, they go, oh, well, this is very intuitive. We really don't need training. So I, I've I've been here two years and never actually had to do a training session. Uh, so we collaborate with my work drive, direct editing of office documents in Office 365 online. Uh, and you can edit them directly online from the browser or the mobile client. My, and this is where I get about as technical as I'm going to get. Uh, and it's, it's uh, but it usually suffices as far as a network overview. How do we do this? If you look to the right, it says a server. So this would be your existing shares, SMB, NAS, Active Directory. That's, that's currently what you have today. You introduce a My Work Drive server into the environment. And once you add it to the domain, we see everything on the right via SIFs. Now our clients go through My Work Drive and see those files from the desktop, mobile, or browser. So uh, uh, very simplest form, that's how it works. This is where I say, Dan, Scott, do you want to add anything to that? No, I uh, think just, that's, an, that's enough for probably from my perspective. Yeah, just, just the Office 365 piece that, you know, we can connect to the file shares through Office 365 on our mobile clients as well. So. Great, cool. Alrighty. Well, here we go. We're going to, um, I'm, I'm pretty much done with my piece. Um, the new uh, version 5.42 latest updates. Scott's going to run us through that and um, I'll just drive the presentation as he speaks. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Rick. And thanks to everyone who's joined and is continuing to join. We, we're often certainly humbled and appreciate you spending a little bit of your morning or afternoon as the case were with us, learning more about the product. Um, I know the, the focus today is on really on 6.0 and cool stuff. That's why you all are here. But we just want to take a minute and highlight a few of the things in 5.4.2 that were released after the initial release of 5.4.2. Some of these were improvements that were just delayed getting out of testing. Uh, and a couple of them were user inspired and also a couple of things we pulled back from version 6 because we were so excited by them. We wanted you to have them early. You know, in 5.4.1, the update prior to 5.4.2, we, we introduced a pretty massive download improvement. So those of you who have been with us certainly know the experience of that. It was, uh, you know, like 100 times improvement on download speed, both for the web and the map drive. And in 5.4.2, we brought a, a really strong upload improvement. Uh, so just took a mirror of what we did for download, did it for upload. Just, you know, trying to give an improved user experience, get closer to that what people expect when they're in the office or when they're working with their own local computer. One of those user inspired improvements was a round of improvements to RDS and VDI environments for the map drive, specifically for the map drive client. The web client of course always worked and the map drive client worked okay, but um, we, uh, we introduced a host of improvements late in 5.4.2 to make that uh, a little bit better, a little bit easier to use and a little bit easier to deploy. An exciting one that we pulled up from version six, because we wanted you to have it now, was directory browsing. Now, a lot of people are gonna look at it and they're not gonna see a difference because they weren't sensitive to it. But if you're like me, in and out of 200 folders a day on my work drive, bouncing between documents, customer save, save files, and, and you know executables that we store in our corporate environment, uh, you really get sensitive to just even that half a second so in a minute, I'm going to, Rick's going to flip over to a slide. Don't go yet, Rick. Um, and, and you'll see a little visual of that and I'll talk through it. Uh, for clients who need to deploy the server in mass, like server updates. And of course, our updates are really easy to do. They're um, uh, designed to be installed in place. So if you've never done an update, it really is. We try to make it really as simple as download the installer and run it. Don't need to do a lot of preparation or a lot of backup. You don't have to uninstall. It's not complicated. Um, but we now offer quiet mode. So if you need to deploy to, uh, you know, a, um, a host of, of uh, machines in a cluster, um, or if you've got a bunch of machines around the world and you're using management software, or if you're one of our partners using a software like, a, a, you know, a Kaseya to manage servers, you can actually push the update out with the quiet mode. Another one of those user inspired improvements is a whole host of zip file downloading and not just downloading, but also building uh, improvements in the web client. So those of you who may have 
engineering or design environments where you need to package up and move a, an entire folder or a set of folders or set of files because you need reference files, you need fonts or something like that. We've made that process faster, more reliable, uh, you know, all the new and improved buzzwords that I could throw in there. So if you're not, if you have a situation like that and you're not on the very latest 5.4.2, again, most of these are improvements that came during the 5.4.2 line. So if you installed early, you will not have these, but all of these are available now. And that's important distinction on what Dan's going to talk about here in a few minutes. All of these features are available now. You can download them now. The last thing I want to talk about, oh, and I also should say thank you to the client who had that use case for those zip files because they worked with us quite extensively. So if you're on the call, I'm not looking at who's in the the, the uh, uh, participants list right now, but if you're on here, thank you to, to you. you. Certainly know who you are. And uh, the last thing I want to talk about is the map, the Mac map drive. Now we've always had a Mac map drive. It was in beta for a long time. Those of you who were using it know um, it really suffered from the same problems that everyone in our, all of our competitors, everyone in this industry has. It was a little slow. It had a lot of limitations and we're really proud of this new Mac map drive because I think it resets the bar, not just for us, but for a lot of our competitors because we've removed really all of those limitations. And I'll talk more about that in just a second here. Rick, if you want to flip over, I'll give you a, just a taste of what our, our upload speed improvement was now in the top 541 and prior. These are real world numbers. These are not perfect theoreticals. I could give you perfect theoreticals and say, well, you'd get a, you know, you'd get a mag or you'd get 20 mag or you'd get 50 mag. But no, these are actual snapshots I took last night during peak primetime hour, you know, when everyone's on Netflix and everyone's with streaming and gaming and all those things. So this is really from my, my house to our corporate environment in Azure. And, you know, 541, 300, 400 KB upload, uh, 542, 10 and a half megabyte upload per second. So big, big upload improvement. Certainly something you'll notice. And not you may say, oh, well, I don't do a lot of uploading. Like my users don't upload files from home. But the reality is whenever they save a document, they're doing an upload. So anyone who's doing any kind of editing, editing in Office 365, editing in local office, pulling a file down, editing and pushing back up, you'll all get a benefit from this. So big, big improvement. Uh, Rick, if you'll give me, well, maybe don't give me, well, okay. So yeah, don't give me the next slide yet because I want to set it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. On the next slide, um, it's immediately going to play a graphic which demonstrates the, the map drive directory browsing performance improvement. You know, that's that thing where I said a minute ago, I'm in and out of 200 folders a day and that half a second that many of you will, will say, oh, I didn't even notice it. It wasn't a big deal. But for those people who are sensitive to it, man, it's a big deal. So when Rick flips over to this, what you're going to see on the, on the left is our new client. It's 542. What you're going to see really is nothing, which is you click, I click into a folder and the folder just loads. All the content is this there. But on the right is our older client, our 541 and older. And you'll see when I click, there's pauses, there's waits. And I tried to call those out on screen with some little circles and some Rick, go ahead and bring that slide up because I can talk to it now. So again, left side, 542 client, you might need to click it to get it to play. Um, okay. well, I'm going to have to go into this mode to make that happen, I'm sure. So there you go. Uh, can you see it? I, we, we, yeah, it, there, a, so there you're starting to see it. On the left, you see I've clicked, it loaded. On the right, it's taking the time to load, right? You see, I click, it's there. I click, there's a wait. You see the cursor's got a wheel. You see there's the working on it shows up in the Explorer window. You see then even in the address bar, you get these green progress bars. All that is gone. We've now got really immediate performance in the client. You can see on this one, we're waiting. And then of course, we've got this green progress bar. And, and uh, so big, big improvement. This is something we actually did in version six. And we were so excited about it. We did the work to bring it to 542 early because we really wanted you to have this. Right, that's right. And in this case, it wasn't really about upload downloads, but it's just more about the a number, reducing the number of API calls so we could really bring down that directory listing much faster. Well, and it's about having that native experience. It's the same as clicking on an SD card or clicking on your C drive, right, or being in the office on the network. It's just that much faster. So, you know, like I say, many people, eh, they don't really notice. But if you're sensitive to it, 
boy, does it make a huge difference. And I'm personally really glad to have it. So the last slide that um, I'd like Rick to show, and you can bounce out of the slideshow mode or you can stay in here, is our okay. Mac map drive. Either way. There you go. Uh, so if you'd give me slide 12, perfect, is our Mac map drive. Now this, that you don't really see a lot here. This just happens to be the map drive running on Catalina with dark mode, right? It, we're going all the way with this. Um, mounts a volume, just like it's a volume on your computer for anyone who's not a Mac, Mac OS user or hasn't seen our map drive client before. So mounts a volume, natively available to all the other applications on the machine. So if you're editing in Word or you, you open something in, in you know, preview and want to edit a, a PowerPoint or a PDF or something, all that functionality and feature is there. And um, uh, some of those improvements that I mentioned, you know, that really, that really set us apart from our competitors. There's, we're not, we're not, we're not trying to do any fake syncing to like sync the files for you. It is real time, just like our, our PC based map drive client. We retain that, you know, no file left behind that Rick mentioned a, a little bit ago. And uh, uh, there's no limits, right? A lot of our competitors say, oh, and even we used to say, those of you on our older client, the 5.2 beta, it says, you know, we really don't recommend you edit a file over 15 or 10 meg. Well, we did um, the majority of our testing, and we joked about this as we were putting this presentation together because we actually used elements from it. We did the majority of our testing with a, a 16 megabyte PowerPoint file. So just to prove that it all worked, reliable, stable, and uh, last thing I say before I turn it over to Dan, I, I want to thank the 20 or so clients who volunteered to be part of our pre-preview early test group on the, the Mac client. Um, we got a, a lot of really invaluable feedback from them. So those of you who joined that group, took the client early, sent me messages and emails. I sincerely appreciate it. Okay, I lied. One more thing before I turn it over to oh, Dan. Huh. If you have any questions about any of the things that we talked about here on 542, you need to do an update. You've never updated your server before and need to know more about how to do it. Anything like that, uh, drop us a line. Support at MyWorkDrive is the email address. We will be happy to talk to you about how to get your server into RDS mode, how to run that server installer in quiet mode, how to get the updates, feedback on the Macintosh client, any of those things. Hey, uh, Scott, is, is it suitable? I, I think we get this quite a bit on support. You know, can we open like large design type files or QuickBooks files or other databases over the map drive? Yeah, so um, we, the, the short answer is no, we don't advise you do that. And really it's not that we don't advise you do that. It's the manufacturer of those softwares come out and say, our software doesn't work in that fashion. You know, specifically, if you go on Adobe and you look at adobe.com, every one of their products, you know, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, they all say, don't open these over a network. And they don't just don't mean my work drive. They mean VPNs. They mean LANs. I know in some cases it works and lots of people, you know, you, go, you do a Google search, it'll say, oh, no, I've got it working. Their instructions aren't right. But no, there are a lot of people out there who have problems. So if Yeah, I've seen people maybe get it going over a LAN in certain cases, like with AutoCAD, but certainly over the internet. These yeah, types of things are so sensitive. The, the to files are very large, right? Mm -hmm. the, so the files, as you say, they're very sensitive. But the other problem is you have all these reference files and all these reference files in folders. And the program expects immediate access to those reference files. You know, they might be, they might be notes on a CAD drawing. They might be fonts in a, in a uh, design program. And if it doesn't have immediate zero latency access, it just doesn't work. And, you know, in our world, we're trying to get there. We're trying to get to zero latency. But at the end of the day, those files aren't moved to the local computer. They're not there. They're on the server. So you're going to have that half a second extra time and the programs just don't have tolerance for it. So, um, but speaking to that, it's a really great question, Dan, and I'm sure you headed off three or four chats that you probably or Rick probably received because <laughs> we're in host mode. Yeah, um, yeah. That's, that's really, and again, I want to thank that client who helped us with the zip file tools because that's really where the web client and the zip client tools come into play because that client is, and um, they're either an architectural or a mechanical design. I can't remember which. Um, and they're doing exactly that situation. They're working in design files on the desktop. And so they want to be able to go on the web client, zip up the folder, create that zip, download it, either zip it to the, to the my work drive server and then download it or just download it as a zip. Of course, we support either in the web client and uh, then work on it locally. And then they can just put back the change files, you know, because you might have, 
in their case, they're, they're each drawing has about a thousand reference files and they're only editing one or two or three of them. So they can pull down the entire reference file set, make their edits to one, two, three files and just drag those three files back. It's very efficient. It, it's very easy to use, but that's really how you get around. Um, and it is, it's databases, anything that's a database. So like a QuickBooks file, an Outlook PST, you know, access, anything like that. Um, and design files, particularly Adobe. Uh, I think you mentioned AutoCAD. Uh, both of those fall in, SolidWorks, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. Really yeah, all so, have that limitation. Yeah, I would definitely encourage everybody to download the latest versions of 542. I know many times people want to jump ahead to the preview and get into that. And then many times we look and we see that a lot of folks are on older versions of 53 and 541. The first thing is always to get to 542. We've put a lot of uh, new features and enhancements in the, even the latest versions of 542. 542 93 is the latest version, so I'd highly encourage everyone if to you are, take if you into are that. If you are more than a month back on your 542 build, you're missing zip file improvements, uh, you're missing the, the directory browsing, and you're missing the RDS support if you need it. So we're, we are continuing to update 542. Like I say, client-inspired innovations, cool features that we found in version six that we just wanted people to have. Um, so yeah, and again, yeah, if you need cool. help with the update, support at my work drive. Uh, me, Andre, some member of the team will jump out in and help you out. Great. I'm going to go ahead and take over host now and start going through some of the stuff coming up in version six that we're working on now. Let's see if I can get that going here. While you're doing that, Dan, I'll just uh, uh, put in a plug for uh, uh, for those that are new here or those that are current customers. I am happy. You can just go to uh, our website and it says uh, schedule you know, schedule a demo. Uh, happy to do that for you know current customers, uh, people that want to see uh, uh, end to end. Happy to do that. Um, so, or you can go to sales at my work drive.com as well. And I will get that. Okay, Dan, I can see what you're doing. So, uh, you're oh, great. So you see here. version six. Features. I do. Yeah. Okay, great. So I have, these are some of the things that we have in version six that we wanted to highlight. We have a number of other small improvements, um, uh, that we're going to be, um, putting in as well. This is going to be a new version six because we're, some of the features that we're putting in here are pretty massive um, in terms of moving some files around and settings to make it more uh, enterprise uh, grade for people that are doing clustering and things like that. So this is going to be more of a, it's not a minor upgrade, this is a major and it's going to be a, a one-way upgrade. So um, that's why we wanted to highlight some of the features coming up in here. Uh, oh, oh, Dan, can I interrupt just one second? Uh, as far as uh, there's probably people that are going to want to have a lot of questions. Um, people are muted, but as Dan goes through this, if you want to just put things in the chat session, we will get to you. Should have mentioned that up front. Sorry about that. Yeah, we'll, we'll have some time at the end. As you can see in my slide, we'll go through some QA and web chat. And of course, you can always hit up sales uh, at the end and you know, after mm -hmm. the and we'll go through stuff too and respond individually. Um, one of the features that I'm going to go through in more detail coming up here in a second is external guest user sharing. So in this case, it's the ability to be able to take shares that you have in my work drive and make them available to uh, people that you're collaborating with, typically contractors or other folks, where they can truly collaborate and be a member of the team on that share and work with those files without you sending links and worrying about your data getting out into the wild or having to manage those users' accounts uh, internally in your Active Directory. So that's that's really huge. And we already can do that now with some of our Azure B2B stuff, and I'll go into that in a second. We're also adding more granular shares uh, permissions. So within a user group that's been granted access to a share, we'll be allowing customers to be able to decide if they want to allow the user to use the map drive, the mobile, um, you know, the web client, all that's going to be um, selectable by user or group within a, within a share to give more granular permissions there. We're also adding more support for multiple domains. So we have some limited support for that now. Uh, there's a workaround in place that's already on our support desk of creating a group within the, within the one domain and then adding the other group from the other domain into that, but that's no longer going to be required. It would be multi-domain aware out of the box. We have Teams integration that I'll go through as well as some of the clustering and 
improvements that I talked about in terms of you know the, being able to take some of these settings and be able to share them amongst multiple servers when they're in a larger enterprise environment. So let's just quickly review what guest user folder sharing is. Um, we actually have a support article on it uh, on our support site. If you just search for B2B, uh, then you'll find it. It's external guest folder sharing, and we already have uh, capability of doing that now. What, what we're actually doing is it's allowing you to be able to take and invite a guest user outside of my work drive to be able to collaborate on a share. And what's actually happening is you're inviting this user, they're getting an email and they're authenticating using Azure AD. They're getting an email invitation. If they don't already have an account within Azure AD, they can create one on the fly. They'll even have to confirm their identity by putting in their cell phone number and getting a text. That's a default just to make sure it's really them that's answering this invite it has to match the email address that you invite. And then at that point, then active Active Directory is using Azure AD as part of our SAML process to do the authentication. So the user is able to see the share, which I'll show in a second, um, but there's no management on your side within Active Directory, so you don't have to worry about usernames and passwords and managing all that. And of course, these accounts are very locked down, restricted. Um, you don't have to manage the passwords or any other authentication. So this is already something that's available now. It's a standard process that Microsoft's put together, and it's, it's part of our support article. They call it Azure AD B2B. And so essentially what it's doing is business to business, allowing you to be able to collaborate with companies outside of your Active Directory using Azure and leveraging Azure AD as part of that process. So I got a little diagram here just to make sure everyone understands what we're talking about here. So you typically you're going to have your My Work Drive server here. You're going to have your Windows file shares. And in this case, you've got Active Directory. Um, you're, what's actually happening in this case when you send that invite is, you know, as part of our Azure AD SAML integration, we're impersonating that user and they're getting that invite um, to, the, to the other domain. And so then when they're accepting it, they're actually logging into Azure AD. Uh, the way the Azure uh, Microsoft B2B process works is we're creating, we are creating an account in Active Directory. However, that user can never actually log into that account. It's restricted. It's not a member of regular domain users. It's essentially a dummy account. And I'll, I'll kind of show how that works in a second. But when that user on the outside of your company logs in, then they're going to see only the shares that you made available to them in my work drive. So, you know, that's how it, how it looks. Let's, let's take a look here at the actual server to see how that's working. Can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. you. Okay, great. So you can see we have our standard list of shares here in my work drive. If I go here and click on edit, there's going to be a new feature here, and forgive me, this is still pretty beta, so hopefully it holds together because we've got some fine-tuning to do. You can see there's a new option here for guest user access. So I've got a couple of users here that I've actually invited. If I click on new, I would put in the user's first name, last name, and email, and they're going to get an invitation. So how does that work, actually? So let's, let's start at the beginning. So the first thing you need to have is you need to have Azure AD SAML turned on. Once you have that enabled, then at that point you've already got that working. Now it's just a matter of creating that account internally and having it match up. So here is where we enable guest user access. You're deciding what OU within Active Directory you wanna put these accounts. We have an Azure AD group that's automatically granted permission to, to log into your application within Azure AD. You can put a suffix in front just to kind of help you more identify these users and keep them cleaned out of Active Directory. And, you know, that's why you also want to have, be able to put them in your a separate OU as well. And then uh, there's a process where you create an application within Azure AD. Even that um, you can do by hand, but we're, we created a, a script that will help you, you know, create that more easily as well. So if we actually look at Active Directory and see what groups and users we have, you can see here's that OU that I talked about, and I've got um, 
an account here. This is the invite that I sent. If I actually go to, you can see I've used a personal email here, dan at dgordon.com. So we actually, as part of that process of inviting that user, we created this account. We actually edited the UPN so that it actually matches the account that they're going to be using for Azure AD. We put in the suffix here at the beginning the cost, that you can customize. But if you actually look at the account, it says smart card is required for interactive login. So they can actually never really log into this account with an active directory. And you can see that it's also, um, you know, members of the groups that it needs to be member of as well. And then if we look within the corresponding on the other side of that. And just to, just to clarify the point, all of that was created by filling the information out in our application. They didn't, you, you didn't have to go into AD and set all those things up. Right, and you can do this now with our B2B script, um, and that is still fairly easy, but this is going to be set up to be more manageable within the admin panel. We also have a piece that we're working on, a separate page where you can manage those external users as well, so you can send them their, you can resend their email invitation, or you can just click delete, and it'll delete them on both sides. Um, so, you know, that's, that's quite handy as well. Cons if I actually, consistent with our theme of no duplicate administration. Right, exactly. And so and once you create that user, you'll be able to access them and put them into multiple shares. So if I actually go back here for a second, that's sort of a good point. That was just on the one share. And now if I go to a, a different share and wanted to add them into that uh, and enable that, um, so what I'm doing is I'm actually specifying what NTFS group do they need to be put in that would have permission to that share. So that's that's how you're and handling it on the NTFS side. It may be a group that's that you use for external contractors or against multiple shares, or it may be a group you know for a separate group for each project. And so that group will just like you do with my work drive for regular users that people that are members of that group would need to have the same NTFS permissions. So once you do that, um, then you're locking it down. But in terms of you know adding users, then they have to be a member of that group, then they'll show up on that list here. Um, mm -hmm. And you can recycle those same users. So um, once I put in an NTFS group, the same users that exist can be reused again, you know, so you don't have to, you know, recreate the invite. They're already a member. Just now you're adding them to another share as long as they're a member of that same NTFS group as well. And then once you send out the invite by clicking that new button, that this they'll get an email like this. And you can actually see that they're going to end up going to the SAML URL. If I click here and go to accept the invite, um, then it'll bring me over to a browser tab. And then the, I'll log in with my personal account. And then at that point, now I'm going to see the shares that I'm being been granted to within my work drive. So that's the share that we did. And I can go in and I can see that I have access to stuff here, just like I would as a regular user. But I don't have access to any other shares. So from an end user, external user perspective, it makes it really easy for them to collaborate with your folks in, internally as well, just like any other regular user would be able to do. Did I miss anything on that step, Scott? No, no. I think, I think you hit everything, and it was really the important part. The important part to know is, you know, you can already do this all manually, and, you know, really, this is just an awesome refinement to avoid that duplicate work and keep you out of having to do everything in PowerShell. And from, right. the, from the sales perspective, this is, this is uh, absolutely customer driven. Uh, I can't tell you on, uh, when I do demos how many calls. Uh, currently, we're, we're sharing via OneDrive, which is really uh, the only way to collaborate with an external user. And uh, this now... Um, supplements that or, or can replace that and a very very highly asked for feature uh, so looking forward to uh, when that becomes permanent and part of my my demo yeah right and actually we struggled for quite a while to figure out how could we securely do this uh, where you're dealing with windows file sharing because you realize 
and, and with my work drive, the files are remaining on Windows file shares, which makes them very portable, which means you don't have to do migration, your files aren't stored in a database. But because of that, you wouldn't want to share a file externally and provide a link directly into uh, a Windows file share. Because what happens when that file is moved? It's not like the file sitting in a database, right? So this way, we're able to still allow those folks to be able to externally collaborate just like they would with internal users. Yeah, if you just want to do one or two files, you can run them through OneDrive. But then this way, they're able to fully collaborate just like any other employee um, that's part of the team, which is exactly what folks want. Yeah, so much beyond, so far beyond just sharing a file with someone, right? It's It's inviting them in to be a full member of the team, the ability to just fully collaborate, but with the same level of security of, you know, okay, they don't need to be here tomorrow and they get removed. That's right. Project end, right? Okay, and then cool. Move on. I'm going to move on to the next couple features that we have in here. Uh, granular permissions on shares. You can see that that's in here. You now have the ability to turn off and on web client, uh, mapper client, mobile client within each user group that I've picked for a share, which is uh, another customer driven request so that's going to make that really easy to do right now uh, I think folks would um, there's some other workarounds in order to make that happen this will make it much easier to be able to do that we also support multiple domains as I mentioned earlier so we have we have multiple domains here in this particular um, so if I go to domain users for example you'll see now there's a MWF2 that's a separate domain in our forest so that'll be added to that share ra rather than currently the way people work around that is you would create a, a group for the users in the other domain and then you would add that group to within a group with an active directory to make that work and that's how that's handled now now it'll be natively right in the interface to be able to handle that because some we've had some folks for example that might want to create a resource domain that they put my work drive in and then have a users be in a completely separate domain this will make it much easier to be able to support that out of the box Some of the other things that we're working on, and I mentioned this earlier as well, is more support for clustering. So we currently have the ability to, for example, point favorites out a, a hidden network share. We, uh, at what, we're, what we've done with version six that we're working on is we're splitting out the settings that can be shared across multiple My Work Drives, such as the users, the shares, uh, any of the other settings that are not specific to an individual server. And then those can be put on a network share, like a hidden share, uh, you know, you know, something like that. And the My Work Drive server computer accounts just need to have access to that. And then one server is designated as your primary server. So that would be the one that would that you would use to, you know, change settings. Uh, for, or add shares, and then the other ones will just read that other information in. The only thing that they'll keep on them is the just the licensing information for themselves. So currently, the way folks handle that now is we have an import and an export option for under settings, and so they can do it that way, or they can individually manage them. There's not a lot of changes folks actually need to make a lot of times to my work drive because they are they're using Active Directory users and groups. It's kind of a set it, forget it, but we do have some customers with a lot of shares, but this will be really handy where they may have hundreds of shares that they're managing or potentially scripting imports on and things like that. And then finally, getting out of sort of the server environment is Teams integration. I think we've seen quite a bit of everyone working from home. We're using Zoom uh, for this particular demo. Um, but a, a lot of folks are really leveraging Teams as well. So we have a new uh, feature that we're working on uh, to be able to provide a channel uh, on a Teams channel here for my work drive. So you can see here I've got a my work drive channel added. Uh, I've got some tasks. I got a sample task over here. And I've actually linked a document using a link that goes back to that same share. So if I go back here, 
you can see there's a my work drive tab that I can add to this and how and right now that's just going to be simply adding a zip uh, that will that the administrator will be able to make available to the company and it's super easy I mean you're literally just clicking down here upload a custom app and the administrator can do that for the entire company or individuals can do that if they're permitted to do so so once that's done then you can add that in and then it will, you can point to specific folders within a share. So maybe you're just working on something related to this particular webinar. Maybe I call it project two on one. This can be a subfolder. It can be in the root of a share, but it'll just display whatever you want it to display in terms of that. And then we also have the ability to be able to go in and view these as view these documents as well as share this so that we can copy this link to the clipboard and then tack this back to a specific task, which is the way we see a lot of folks using it. So in this case, the files still remain on your My Work Drive server. They're not transferred up to SharePoint. They're not, they don't live outside of the company, but then anybody working in this channel, as long as they have a My Work Drive login, will be directed right to that specific folder where they files live uh, that make sense for you know to tie things back to so my my day in day out operations i'm in my work drive i'm on my smb share i'm able to to work with those files just as i always would but i need to share them with another member of the team i need to call call for help we're on a meeting we're looking at things together we're able to pull them all together right here through teams without having to say oh wait let me switch windows let me browse explore whatever it may take to get to them that's right. So we're gonna we have some work to do on this yet in terms of we, we right now we can let me see if this even works yet. We can go in and view this uh, document within our viewer. You can see that that's working. But we'll be adding some additional capabilities here when you click on this. So if you're enabling Office Online, you'll be able to edit this document or view this document right when you're working with your team members and going over tasks and you know adding things here on the fly as well. So. Cool. That's yeah, and, and we, just a we comment on this. this. Yeah, I was going to say we will use this in our own Teams <laughs> meetings. Yep. Uh, I think all of us have been asked about this. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. We're, we we said, wouldn't it be nice when we're in Teams if we could do this and this and this? And then next thing you know, we we provided it. So. Cool. So thank you, Dan. So we're, we're pretty much uh, ready for uh, Q&A. Uh, we'll be answering the, any questions that come in shortly. But so if you have any questions about my work drive, you can certainly go to our website. Um, any technical questions, support at myworkdrive.com. If you'd like to contact me, uh, sales at myworkdrive.com to schedule a demo, um, get pricing, uh, what, whatever you may need. And uh, again, you can find us on the web at myworkdrive.com. Uh, Dan will be posting this um, as uh, this video, um, the recording, right? Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll it put up. A, yeah, we'll put it up on our side. We'll link it into a YouTube video and send it out to everybody that's participating. Great. As well, Great. Uh, I do see a couple questions that have come in. Uh, one of them is, can you access my work drive through Azure NetApp SIF share that lives in Azure? Absolutely, we can do that. In fact, um, Azure NetApp file shares show up just like a computer account would if it was a Windows file server. We so have an article no, no we co-authored with them on our blog, don't we? That's right, we do. Yeah. Actually, that's a good reminder. It would be the same kind of thing with Azure Files, except that it's even a little bit easier than Azure Files because the way it works with NetApp is you're basically adding that to Active Directory, just like you would other any other member server. And so then you can use Azure AD SAML integration, single sign-on, you can use username, password, uh, all of that works. The only thing that doesn't work is if you wanted to use a Windows search you would ha you can't there is no search agent for Azure NetApp, but you can use our DT search integration to be able to do searching against those shares and make an index those if you wanted to have search available for those. But that's the only limitation on that. So so setting that up, if you go on our website, click on the blog, search for keyword NetApp, you should pull that article up. If you can't find it, uh, shoot an email over to support, and one of us will send you a link to it and help you through it. 
Great. Um, and then the other question that's come up is, you know, when does version six come out? Oh, so, we knew that one was coming, didn't we? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that'll be coming out. Um, you know, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we'll be able to at least make it available for a preview. We've definitely got some major work to do. As you can see, it is version six and it's a major version upgrade and it will be a one way. We tend to have some folks that have some QA servers that would like to do the beta testing on that themselves as well. We welcome the feedback and we can make it available and we will post that within a couple of weeks you know, on our site when that's ready. And we will also send that, send an email blast around once the preview is available. In our experience, it usually takes between two to four weeks after that before we can declare it um, as the actual release production version. And, and I, I see a question, Dan, um, mm -hmm. it, regarding uh, the Mac client um, re, uh, and files being open. Let's say somebody's working on a file through the Mac client and they, they walk away for lunch and they forget to close it. And so it's locked for other users. Uh, can we, how do we address that? If you actually leave the file open and your machine has it open, just like you would on the LAN, that file is going to remain locked unless you go on the the um, uh, file server and you know browse into file shares and, and actually unlock that document, kick that user out. Um, the other thing that people do a lot is they'll they'll leave a file open and then maybe just put their laptop to sleep. Now, yeah, but if you do that, we handle that a little bit differently, right? We, mm -hmm. if you walk away with, if you put your laptop to sleep or you disconnect from the network, uh, you know, file, it goes to sleep, you close the lid, uh, you know, you walk out of a conference room and down a hall where you don't have Wi-Fi anymore. We have an unlock procedure for that, which will fire after about 15 minutes. We'll actually unlock that file for you so others can access it. But if you actually keep that file open, active on a machine, it will remain uh, file locked, but if you if you sleep the machine, the machine disconnects, you lose your internet connection, whatever, something like that. We have a provision in there to unlock that file for you, so it's yeah, not held. Yeah, so up. it doesn't just right. hold open indefinitely, right? Uh, we do have another question around our Cloudflare integration, which is our what we use for our relays. Are we going to be increasing the hundred meg limit? A lot of that's coming from Cloudflare themselves. There are capabilities to do direct connections, of course, yourself. Uh, we might be looking at potentially bumping that uh, up as high as 200 megs. They're, I know that they're making some changes over there uh, on that as well. Um, that is something that we'll keep a close eye on. We're in contact with them, partnering with them on that. But 100% if you want to remove that, you can deploy your own uh, Cloudflare. Uh, you can go with your own reverse proxy. You can do a... a a WAP in, in IIS, you can do a Genix, you, like there's lots of solutions. Lots of people now are they're deploying the camps and F5s. So lots of alternatives um, to protect your, you know, protect your, your install, on-premise install. Uh, don't expose a public IP, but don't be dependent on our Cloudflare, which has that limitation. Right. Cool. That's, I don't see any other questions that have come in at the moment. Um, Rick, like anything, anything? Yeah, I got, I got one, Dan, I'd, I'd like to throw because it, uh, it was enlightening to me uh, when we were in London. Uh, we had someone come up and say, I love your product and everything, but I cannot open up an inbound uh, 443. And, and, and Cloudflare, uh, <laughs> I get myself in trouble technically, doesn't Cloudflare address that if you don't, aren't able to open up inbound traffic on 443? Yeah, it does actually. There, it's using an outbound call in order to be able to do that. So there is no inbound direct access. In addition to the fact that you're making it available through Cloudflare through our MyWorkDrive.net domain, uh, there's also some web application firewall and other internet rules that are applied to that as well. Some some additional protections beyond the fact that it's just not directly accessible. There's some additional you know, web application firewall protection that's built into that as well that we've enabled. Good, because I know he was excited about that. He went from, oh, now I can use it. So I thought I'd throw that yeah, out there. Yeah, it's especially important nowadays with a lot of the security conscious stuff and some of the work that we're doing with healthcare and other you know, secure providers for data. Well, 
Great. All right. Well, if there's no more questions, really appreciate uh, this is probably our biggest webinar we've ever done with a number of attendees. Appreciate everybody sticking with us. Uh, I can't tell you how excited I am about version six. I think it's the most major release of the two and a half years I've been here. Um, so uh, hopefully uh, uh, you guys are excited about that as well. Thank you so much for attending. As I mentioned, um, uh, you can go to our current webinars um, or anytime webinars just by going to our site. Uh, also, um, we will be uh, sending out this. Again, I had a few people saying, I, I can't attend, but please record. So people will be getting that and feel free for people in your own organizations to uh, spread that around. Um, anything else from you folks? Dan, Scott, uh, parting remarks. <laughs> No, that's it. I really appreciate everybody's support during this time, and we're looking forward to continue to work with everybody. I echo Dan Thanks. and would repeat what I said earlier, which is just thanks to everyone for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend with us and learn more about our product. Really sincerely humbled and appreciate it. Great. Looking forward to talking to each and every one of you. Thanks. Have a great rest of your day. We gave you eight minutes back. <laughs> Have a good one. Thank you.